You ready? <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate the attention you're giving our team and our program. Lucky you're 13 for me, so um, this is going to be the one. Um, I think the story of the year definitely is about the eight seniors that we have on this team. Of course, we have an incredible team with a lot of depth, but we return uh, six all-region players, if you include the addition of Kelly Lynch, six all-SEC players, two-time Gold Glover, two All-Americans. They have a ton of accolades. They have a ton of experience. Uh, this senior group is just done so many things in their career with one thing left hanging over their heads, and that's what they will set out to do this year. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of familiar faces in our lineup. You're going to see a lot of similarities to where we've been the last few years, and that's a credit to how talented they are. And, um, you know, there's really no substitute for experience, and we're going to put players in the lineup. Sierra Briggs has 613 college at-bats. Taylor's close to 500. We're going to have a ton of experience top to bottom in this lineup. Um, I, I think I would be remiss, though, to not speak about some of the new additions we have in the program this year. Um, I think a big one is Kelly Lynch, transfer from Washington. She's in her fifth year. She's a two-way player, right-handed hitter that you're definitely going to see in our lineup. And then, of course, everybody knows the special things that she does on the mound. Um, she's a huge addition for the team in so many ways. I can't say enough about what she brings to us athletically, but I think her experience of just playing in the College World Series and all of the things that she does brings a great energy to us, a lot of wisdom, a lot of fun, a lot of good energy. Um, we're excited about the the addition of Kelly and how she will complement Sid Burzon coming off her freshman All-American season, Ray Chafin, and then Emily Casanova and Emma Strude uh, on the mound. Our newcomers are extremely talented. We have a great group of freshmen that we've been really impressed with. I would say they're led by Sierra Daniel, Maddie McKee, um, there's a ton of freshmen, Tori Edwards, that have done a lot of really great things for us. We're excited about the future of the program. They will see some time early because they will have to because they're so talented. Um, but I think the more we see them and the more they learn, we understand that the future of this program is bright, even though we're going to be really senior-led this year. Um, the other newcomer that I really want to mention is Bryce Neal, who I think that's probably my best recruiting job of the season, is um, convincing Bryce Neal to come to LSU. We were able to beat out several SEC schools um, on hiring him as our new assistant, uh, and he's brought a lot to the table since he's been here. Um, also on our staff, Sandra, Sandra Moten has become, well, she's become a new mom, which is really cool this off season. but she's become full-time, which she's um, so deserving, and it's a full circle moment, someone that played here and now has coached here and just been a huge part of our staff. She's such an asset. She works with the slappers, the speed players, and uh, they truly depend on her wisdom and knowledge and experience. And then we also have added Zach Germain in an analyst position. He does some data analytics for us, really just takes our game to another dimension. So um, I'm excited about the staff that's going to complement the team this year. Um, they're coming off of an awesome season last year, 40-plus wins, the number 10 national seed, and I, I know that they're ready to get going and super excited to take the field next Thursday. I would say that's the State of the Union for me, so I'll open it up for questions from you guys if you want to add. Jim, you're up. Yeah, Beth, you've probably had a senior-laden team like this in, in past years. Uh, what are the special handling techniques with it? I can't remember one that's been this senior heavy, um, and these guys have so much experience. And I think the COVID year adds to it. You know, there's several of them in their fifth year. We even have a sixth year with Hannah Carson. I mean, she's 24 years old and, you know, playing out there every day. So the amount of just maturity and experience that they bring is incredible. You know, we pulled them aside last week and talked to them a little bit um, just about not trying to press so much and playing like it's, you know, your last this, your last that, your last first game, your last this, you know, that's the one fear I have for them is just playing free and playing like they're going to play forever. That's the mentality that we're going to take every day. Um, I know they have a lot of things they want to accomplish and a strong legacy that they want to leave, and they're capable of doing that. I think the nice thing is they have each other. You know, they have each other to lean on, um, and I think they will continue to do that. They're all great leaders in their own right, so I think they will continue to lead each other, um, and, and together they're going to bring a really strong group. Hey, Adam Gattuso, Tiger TV. Sort of the prevailing theme with this team over the years has been that it's a very competitive program but just can't get over the hump. Is there an identifiable 
thing that you point to as maybe the reason or, or room to improve and what have you done to improve in those areas? Well, this team has played a top 10 strength of schedule every year that I've been the coach here. This team was the number 10 national seed last year. They've, you know, played in multiple super regionals. We've been to four college world series. So um, I think they've had a ton of success in their time here. 40 plus win season is, is tough to do in the SEC. It's, it's really, really tough to do. So I think they have accomplished a lot of things. The list of accolades for these women goes on and on and on. Um, you can keep it on the field. You can take it off the field. We have Allie Newland, who wins the community service um, award every single year, who's up for some of the greatest awards in the SEC. I mean, you can make the list of things that they've accomplished, um, and, and we could stand here all afternoon if you wanted to. These girls are, are really, really special um, and have done a ton of things in their career. Um, Ava Aver, thank you. <laughs> Ava Aver, I'm from the Reveille. Um, you know, this is arguably one of y'all's most experienced teams that y'all have had in a really long time. How far ahead are y'all letting yourselves think, you know, postseason already, just to get excited about things? I, I think really what this team has tried to do um, is just be the best version of themselves every day. I think we can get caught up in, you know, a pitch here from last year or a pitch there, but I think they're really trying hard just to be the best LSU softball team they can on, you know, what is this, Thursday, February 1st? I mean, that's the goal of the day. And just I think they're super focused on themselves, how they can be better, what they can do well, um, and putting kind of the past or our opponent aside and really just being us. And I think if they can continue to do that, they are going to be very hard to beat because they're incredibly talented and incredibly experienced. Hi, Coach. Bree Andrews, WBRZ. How do you plan to kind of utilize your freshmen early in the season and kind of see what they can do in a real game scenario before you get into conference play when you kind of have to, you know, don't hone in on who you're going to play in every game, especially with conference? Yeah, it's going to be a challenge with all the experienced players all over this field. It's something we've thought a lot about and talked a lot about, and they need some time. They're really, really special players, and, you know, of course, we, not, we don't want to just prepare them for the future. We want to prepare them in case, you know, of something that happens this season, too. So we're going to have to find spots for them. Um, you know, we'll probably see them in different spaces when we're letting people rest, giving people some opportunities. The nice thing about them is they're really versatile. Um, the infielders all play multiple positions. Um, you know, Tori Edwards being a big right-handed power bat, which I think, you know, this team is extremely left-handed dominant, so I think it's easy to find spaces for her. Um, but it's nice to, that they have their versatility, that we can use them in a lot of different ways. So that's um, a really good question that I'm going to have to answer as we move forward, my staff and I. Um, and I think it'll be a fun problem to have, to have this much depth and this much talent in one group. All right, Yvette Gerard, uh, SEC Network, from the coach that has taken this program to four College Women's World <laughs> Series, why don't you educate the media on the play clock and the one-way communication with the team? And is the play clock just a um, SEC deal or is it uh, nationwide? From the, from the goat herself. Just trying to be like you every day, G. Um, so a couple new rules. We've had a few rule changes here this year, but the pitch clock is one that we have implemented to try to speed up the game. So the count has always been there, but it's being um, counted a little differently and it's going to be reinforced. It is something that they have really put an emphasis on. So it's 20 seconds uh, for the pitcher to deliver the pitch from the minute they catch the ball. The batter has 10 seconds to get in the box and then 10 seconds to be prepared to receive the pitch. Um, the pitch clock itself, um, the SEC has decided that we will have a visible pitch clock on the field. There will be a pitch clock in center field and one behind home plate. Um, we've all decided that as a conference, but the rule itself will be enforced everywhere we go. The visible clock is not necessarily required, but the rule itself will be enforced. Um, the other thing that we added this year that has been really nice for me um, as the pitch caller is, is the pitch comm system or the two-way uh, or the one-way communication device. So we're able to put pitches into the game now um, just with a press of a button and the players can look on their arm. Baseball's had this for the last few years. Um, another way that we're trying to speed up the game um, and I think a really great thing for us just makes our life so much easier, the player's life so much easier. You know as a coach there's no longer the... I read this wrong, I didn't get the number, now it just says throw a rise ball inside. So there is no argument on 
what you read or what you didn't. It's, it's been really, really nice in speeding up the game. Beth, uh, T Taylor Pleasant's injury last year had a significant effect on your season. Um, I'm wondering about her health uh, going into the year, and uh, is it going to be a concern, and what kind of offseason did she have? I would say she's as healthy as she's been. I think she feels great. I think Taylor is a worker. I mean, she is one of the greatest workers we've ever had in this program. That's why she is who she is. And I think in the past she's tended to kind of work herself into the ground. I think now she's found a balance of, you know, some days she needs to be a little bit lighter. She's found some other ways to work that aren't as taxing on her body. So I would say she's in the best shape that she's been. Um, I think she feels good, and I think, you know, she's excited. It's going to take a lot to stop her this year. It really is. Hey, Coach, um, Sydney Burzon, the, the volume of work she got as a freshman, what, did she, what do you think she you know, learned from that her first year now moving into her second year? I think all of us as a staff, as a team, can't say enough about Sydney Burzon and her talent level and what she's capable of. Um, she has so many weapons and speeds and it's just so tough to hit. I know our team is ready for when they can stop facing her and she can face somebody else. Um, I think she learned a ton last year. She's another one that's worked really hard this off season and made some adjustments and some change and I think she's better for it. Um, Sydney is not one that you have to give a lot of goals or ideas. She has a million goals and ideas of her own so she kind of came to me with a plan of the things that she wanted to implement and upgrade and we've worked really hard to make that happen and I would say she's in a really good spot with all of it so um, I think when you ask our players they're going to tell you she's as tough to hit as anybody in the game. Uh, Trinity Johnson just with student media with having so many seniors on your team is there any mindset shift that they're having just to make this like the best season for them or are you guys kind of in the same mentality that you have been in the past seasons? I think as you know, their coach, I think that's what we'll have to manage throughout is just that their mentality stays strong and it doesn't just, um, you know, like I mentioned, continue for them to be like, oh my gosh, this is my last this, my last that, my, you know, and, and we have to make it happen and putting so much pressure on themselves. This is a group that has wanted to win so bad the entire time they're here. They have put so much pressure on themselves to be great. Um, sometimes they can out try themselves. Um, I think that will be their thing this year is they've got to continue to find ways to be free and loose and fun. I hope you see them smiling a lot and joking a lot. I think that would mean they're in a good spot. Um, you know, I think we've got a bunch of people that do that really well. Danica is always smiling and laughing. I know she's in a good spot when she's able to do that. And, um, you know, I think if they're continuing to do that and find the joy in what we're doing, then I think they're going to be in great shape and they're going to be unstoppable. Hey, Coach, i got two questions. Uh, first of all, the, 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 just the, the comfort you're going to have writing Taylor Pleasance's name in the lineup for one more year. And then second of all, just the impact having Carson back after such a short period, you didn't get to really use her. And she probably could have maybe moved on with her life, but she came back to help you. Yeah, I, Taylor Pleasance is as special as any player we'll ever have in this program. I think it's not just what she does for us on the field. It's her as a human being. It's the way she works. It's her as a student. She... Um, has, has just been a mainstay for us her entire time here. So um, I'm also not going to be the person that's counting the days I have left with her or any of the seniors with Allie or Sierra or Danica or any of them. I'm not going to be the person that's counting the days. I'm going to try just to enjoy every moment we have with them and keep pushing them to be their absolute best. I think that's my job this year is just to try to get the most out of them. So um, I'll deal with my depression from losing them at the end of the season. But for now, I'm going to find joy in watching them play every single day I get to. Um, Hannah Carson's return I think is going to be really big for us. She's had some really good at bats and good moments here in uh, early January in scrimmages. I think her offense has been really good. Um, she brings a different type of maturity to us. Um, she just has veteran at bats along with these other guys. I mean Kelly Lynch has veteran at bats. Allie Newland has veteran at bats. They just don't seem to have a bat at bat. They're never just out of a moment. Hannah feels the same way. Um, she just has a lot of experience, veteran at bats, and I think brings a different level of calm to us. I think um, she will, you know, be splitting time with Macy Bajeron. I think it will make both of them so much stronger rather than just having Macy back there having to, you know, drink out of a fire hose a little bit. Although Macy has had a really strong off season too. She's in a great spot. She's done a lot of work on a lot of different areas of her game. Um, so you will see them both. Um, but I think having Hannah and 
what she brings to us. Um, Hannah's, I, I've never, I can't imagine ever meeting someone that doesn't like Hannah Carson. She just has a really special way about her, and I know our team loves that. Hey, Coach, uh, where do you guys think you are defensively and especially within your pitching rotation that you plan to go with? What kind of really sold you on the athletes that you are going to play this season? You know, I think um, our team has played together so much. I think they are really player-led. Um, Taylor is really the field general out there and just has a really good way of keeping everyone calm, of directing traffic, of just being a great leader for us. Um, Sierra really brings us a ton of energy. Carly Petty brings us a ton of energy out there. You know, you'll see them really. Um, Sierra ramps up the intensity, I think, of all of our defense. Carly is always one to smile it off, laugh it off, bring everybody back, you know, so I think they all have their different roles and they all understand their roles. Um, and I think they've played together so much. They're really confident in what, you know, people are going to do, where she's going to be, what, what, you know, decision she's going to make. So I think that's a really nice thing to have that kind of experience. They had a really strong defensive year last year, set some program records. Um, and, you know, I hope they'll continue to build off of that. Of course, there's no perfect season or, you know, no perfect way to play defense, but um, they did have a record-setting year last year, so I hope they continue that. Coach, I guess you have a group of seniors who their first year was COVID when the season was canceled and whatnot, and that was a pretty profound experience for all those players, and now this is their last year, right? The Taylor Pleasants, uh, even Kelly from Washington, those players. Can you just talk about the – going full circle here in their final year. Yeah, Taylor said it the other day that, you know, she was so thankful for that year because it gave her extra time here with us, and I feel the same way. I mean, I think um, not just what we've been able to teach them on a softball field, but the relationships with these guys getting the extra year, and they are all people that you would want to have around for an extra 10 years if you could. You know, they're an incredible group of human beings. They make our jobs so enjoyable as coaches here. Um, this group has just done all the things right the entire time they've been here. So you could tell me I have 10 more years and I would gladly take them because um, they're really special. So I'm super thankful that we've got the extra year with them. When you get into the thick of a schedule and into conference play, what is sort of the balance of sort of self-scouting, working on things that you guys need to improve and then preparing for another team? I guess the follow-up to that, having this much experience, does that allow you to kind of focus more on preparing for another team than what you guys want to do? Well, we spend a ton of time preparing for other teams. So that's on our staff, though, a lot more than our team. I hope our team practices every day and just focus on themselves. Um, it's our job as coaches to direct them, I think, to work on the right things. Um, but the bulk of my day and my life is spent scouting our opponents this time of year. Um, I mix in a few gym meets and, you know, eight-year-old basketball games every once in a while. But for the most part, the bulk of our life is spent scouting our opponents. Um, we're lucky to have added Zach Germain to the staff um, to help us do that, um, to help us get organized. But our game is really turning to a very data-driven or opportunity to be data-driven. Um, a ton of different video systems that we have in place this year. Some are new, some we haven't used before. Bryce has brought us some different ideas and things. So um, a lot of the decisions we're making will be numbers-based. Um, and I hope still our players continue to play LSU softball every day and play the best they can in, within themselves and focus on their strengths. And then as coaches, it's our job to develop the strategy. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for the support.